Craig James here from MasculineByDesign.com. This is the Masculine by Design Mancast. Good to be with you today. Uh, today, uh, before I get started, I just want to uh, thank everybody for your support, for listening. Um, I said the same thing at the beginning of the last podcast, and uh, it, it bears repeating <clears throat> because uh, you know, what I do behind this microphone and on MasculineByDesign.com is only possible by having faithful listeners, faithful followers, and uh, you know, to to write, write and uh, record podcasts and to get content out there without much of an audience sucks. Um, so it's nice to know that there are people out there who actually are are listening in, who are reading, who are taking it to heart, who are using it to uh, enhance their lives by unleashing their masculinity. And uh, so I just want to say thank you. Um, if you haven't done so already, please go to iTunes and search for the Masculine by Design Mancast and give me a five-star review. Let me know what you like about this podcast. Uh, that will help me get my search rankings up within iTunes algorithms, uh, which will help get the message of masculinity out to uh, more and more guys who are uh, living in a silent desperation and, and desperately need uh, this message um, that I'm bringing here on a regular basis. So uh, please do that. I really would appreciate that. And also, if you haven't done so already, please go to MasculineByDesign.com. Sign up for your free copy of my book, ba- Masculine by Design, where I explore the four uh, quintessential principles of living your life uh, with the masculinity you've been designed with in order to unleash that power for your benefit, the benefit of your family, and the benefit of society. Okay, so for today's podcast, uh, the topic is how to advance your career in corporate America. So I was spending a little time on Twitter this afternoon, and uh, one there, there was a particular uh, person who I don't follow, but they replied to uh, one of the one of the men that I follow on Twitter, uh, basically saying that you know they earn six figures, but they also uh, do a lot of side hustles in order to continue to advance themselves and to uh, hone their skills and be able to uh, earn a living. Uh, at least a portion of their living doing something that they love that they're passionate about something that is their own and uh it, it really struck me that you know that's kind of the same boat that so many of you find yourselves in it's the same boat that I'm in where you know I have a day job I work 45 50 hours a week most times at my day job uh, as an engineering project manager uh so I work for a company that does controls engineering so we develop systems uh software and hardware uh, that automate processes within different industries, be it uh, oil and gas, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, different food, uh, f- food applications, um, and other batch applications in, in various industries. Um, and so, you know, I, I've I've worked my way up to that project manager position. I have a degree in electrical engineering. I started out at a very uh, meager income uh, as far as electrical engineers go. And I've worked my way up into six figures um, in in pretty short amount of time. I'm, I'm only 35 years old, um, so I think a lot of people would uh, would would like to know, you know, what I did to get there. And, and my path is not uh, normal. It's not, you know, I, I work with a lot of different people who are who have STEM degrees, similar skill sets to mine. Uh, but there are things that I've done that has set myself apart. So there, there are most of the uh, engineers that I work with who have the same degree, same background that I do. Uh, they haven't advanced as far as I have. And there are, are uh, several key reasons as to why I believe I've advanced uh, as I have. And uh, those reasons are very much in alignment with my mission to live masculine. These are things that I think all masculine men should be doing. It is something they should prioritize um, just as as a fact of being aligned with their nature of being masculine, but also because of the benefits that it uh, will unlock for them. Um, as, I, as I mentioned in, in my book, Masculine by Design, you know, it's written around four principles um, that men need to align their lives around um, because it is it is in alignment with their reality, their masculine reality. But um, when we align ourselves with reality, uh, things happen for us. You know, positive things happen. I mean, when we fight against reality, we can't expect things to really go our way for uh, for us to not have some consequence of that. And sometimes those consequences are very dire, very drastic. So by aligning ourselves with our masculinity, it bodes well for us. And that includes... Uh, the way that we do our work. And so I, I'm in corporate America. I'm, I work for a Fortune 100 company. 
Um, so I'm in the belly of the beast of, you know, two to three percent standard raises, really hard to get noticed. Um, you have to do a lot to stand out in order to get promoted and to advance um, within the company. And I, I spent my first, uh, I guess, six years there uh, not being noticed. Um, I, I was doing much of the things that I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. Um, but just because of the, the sheer nature of there being, you know, thousands of employees, um, hundreds within just my specific little division there, um, it, it's hard to get noticed. And so it may take some time for that to happen. Um, but even in that uh, somewhat uh, difficult situation, the difficult environment to get noticed that I was in, I was eventually able to get noticed for the way that I perform my work. And, and um, it, it has been a tremendous blessing to me in terms of my finances just over the past uh, i think four years i've doubled doubled my salary um so uh, that you can't it can happen um it is hard i'm not going to say that it isn't but it can happen i don't think that i'm anything special i think that anybody who um, is in the right circumstances with the right people around them and who does the things that i'm going to talk about here can really thrive even within corporate america where uh, they tend to be stingy with uh, promotions and raises, um, and so that, that's what I want to talk about today: is how how do you, how do we as men advance our careers in corporate America? So one of the biggest aspects that that people don't even think about very often, um, because it's just kind of second nature to be negative, to think about the things that are not going right, and so we we complain about uh, everything around us that we don't like uh, and. One of the biggest reasons I believe that I was noticed and that my bosses wanted to reward me was that I, I wasn't a complainer. If you put yourself in your boss's shoes, um, they have a job to do. He, he or she has a job to do, uh, usually to get more out of their employees, um, but also they have initiatives they need to um, try to achieve. And the team that they have around them plays a big part in that. And, and a lot of times bosses will have bonus incentives and things like that. So um, the way their employees perform, the morale of their employees, it has a direct impact on their well-being, on, on their ability to advance. And, and so, you know, when you are an employee, you have to think about how your actions are going to be viewed by your boss. Uh, and some of you have some bosses that are real jackasses. You know, I, I've been in that position. I, I've had... Um, I don't know, I guess five or six bosses now. And fortunately, I've only had one who I could really describe as a jackass. Um, but, but they're out there and they're tough to work for. But at the end of the day, every boss is going to appreciate an employee who holds their head high, who doesn't complain. Um, when they, when they bring down initiatives and changes to the team, uh, it's going to be natural for most of their employees to either silently or even overtly complain about what's going on. And so you you need to make sure that you're an employee who doesn't do that. Even if you feel a little bit slighted or the change might increase your workload or your responsibilities without any financial compensation for it and you feel just, you know, you're not really happy about it, don't show that. You know, you need to have a smile on your face you know, say things like, yeah, you know, this is really going to increase my workload and responsibilities, but I see that it's great for the company and I'm willing to do what it takes uh, for the better of the company. You know, you say the right things. Uh, your, your boss will take notice. Um, you, you don't you don't have to always uh, really feel the way you're, you're saying that you feel. Um, but but you want to let your boss know that um, that you're you're not you're not going to be a complainer. You're not going to be downtrodden about it. Um, and. And. You know, to be honest, most of the time, things don't turn out as bad as you think they will. Uh, I've had so many instances where I've kind of put on a fake smile about things that have, that have gone on. And, uh, you know, I don't like to do that <clears throat> in all circumstances. I think there are definitely times where we need to speak up and, and let our thoughts uh, be known and our feelings be known. Um, but most of the time, the way that I thought things were going to go down uh, at the beginning were a lot worse than they than they truly ended up being. And so... What happened was, is over time, all those people who complained up front, they came to that realization, but they had already tarnished their reputation because they spoke up, they complained, uh, they, they made a spectacle of themselves, whereas I, I held my head high and said, you know what, I understand, you know, it's, it's, not, it's generally not your boss's fault as to why they're giving you extra work or special things to work on. Um, it usually comes down from above them. And so, you know, I, I understood that. 
Um, I let my boss know that I was supporting them, even if I didn't feel that great about it. You know, that, that was the situation. I mean, what else, what else is there? You know, you, you, you make lemonade out of lemons. That, that's all you can do. And your boss will appreciate that. Uh, having complainers on a team is that's cancer to a boss, to, to, a, to the morale of the team and to a boss's attitude toward his team or, or her team. Uh, it, it's, it sucks to, to manage people who are constantly complaining. You know that whenever you bring something down that maybe even be for their benefit or for the benefit of the whole, that they're going to complain about it. They're going to be naysayers. So don't, don't be that person. Uh, your bosses will take notice and it will set you apart from the herd and uh, just make you that much more of a value, a higher value person to work with and to work, uh, to have working for, for your boss. Next, you want to do what you promise. Uh, when you make promises to somebody, you need to keep them. Uh, people will uh, very easily forget when you keep your promises, but when you don't keep your promises, they will not forget that. They will hold on to that, and, and every time that you make a promise to them after that, there's always going to be this thought in the back of their head just lingering there as to whether or not you really mean what you're saying and whether you're going to make good on what you've, what you've promised to do. Um, and this, this isn't just in relation to your boss, but all of your coworkers. And, and to that note, you never know uh, who might end up being your boss one day or who you might have on one of your teams as you advance in your career. And so you, you want to leave a positive mark whenever you can. Things come up, you, you know, you, none of us are perfect, uh, but you need to make it a priority. If, if you say you're going to have a report produced by 5 o'clock or at the end of the day um, on Tuesday, you need to have that report done and on their desk by the end of the day Tuesday. Um, and if, if you know you're not going to meet that, you need to fess up and tell them. Uh, nothing is more frustrated. I, I say this as somebody who has people that report to me um, on various projects and who have deliverables that they need to provide me on certain deadlines. And nothing is more frustrating when I fail to make a promise to the people who are depending on me because the people I'm depending on don't meet a promise that they have given to me. So if they're supposed to give me some details or data or information that I need to consolidate and pass along, um, that looks bad on me when they don't meet their promises to me. And so remember that when you make a promise to somebody, a lot of times not making good on that promise goes a lot further. It, it percolates further down the chain or up the chain um, from just where you're sending that. And so people's uh, lives, people's uh, work uh, reputations, they're dependent upon you in a lot of ways. And so if you make a promise, you need to keep that promise. Um, and, and being a reliable employee or a reliable coworker, uh, people really appreciate that. Um, it's so nice, especially for bosses, to know that they can hand something off to somebody and, and that's it. They don't have to worry about it. They know that it's going to get done. It's going to get done um, as they wanted it, as, as they intended it to be done. They know that it will be done on time and, and there won't be any hassle or any fuss or any uh, concerns with having to deal with issues when they pass it off. So, you know, this seems like it should be a no-brainer, but I can tell you that um, – Probably more than half the people in any given department uh, don't make good on their promises uh, very often. You know, they're, they're constantly late. They're they're disorganized. Uh, they they don't let people know when they're going to miss deadlines. So set yourself apart by being somebody who does, being someone who meets your deadlines, makes good on your promise, uh, know, knows how to manage your time in order to get the top priority things done when they need to be done, and and that will. Um, that'll get you noticed. And, and if not, it, it at least keeps you off somebody's radar um, of being somebody who can't be relied upon, which um, is a terrible place to be. That will hinder your advancement um, extremely uh, negatively. So if, if you get a reputation around the, the company or among bosses that you can't be relied upon, you can pretty much kiss any opportunity for promotion goodbye. Next uh, is that you shouldn't be afraid to speak up or volunteer or act. Um, and so what I mean by that is your boss is likely going to have initiatives and special projects or even even things that they don't know about yet, things that, that could be done that would really be helpful to them to make their job easier, to help them report on a metric that maybe they're being held to or a way that the team can do things more efficiently. So speak up. Tell them. Let, let them know that if, if you have ideas of ways that things can be done better, more efficiently, let them know about it, but in, 
instead of just letting them know about it, also be prepared to act on it. So, you know, there have been a number of times in my career. Um, I love putting together uh, tools, uh, particularly within uh, Microsoft Excel, that will just help uh, make people's lives more efficient. To pull data together and disseminate it in a very at a high level where anybody can look at it and quickly understand um, what's going on with a project or um, an estimate or, or whatever that might be. And so I've I've developed a number of tools within my company that are used um, not just within my department. Some of them are even used across uh, the entire spectrum of North America, um, across all of the offices that, that we have across North America. So, you know, that that's one of the ways that I've been able to sell myself um, as I've advanced in my career is, is the initiatives that I put in place that have saved the company – uh, perhaps millions of dollars uh, by making teams of people more efficient in what they're doing and helping management to see the big picture of, of how things are shaking out on the activities and the projects that, that I'm working on and that those around me are working on. So when you see an opportunity to make your boss's life easier or to improve something, speak up and, and be ready to take action on it. You know, you, when you have an idea you know, your boss may really like the idea, but the next thought that's going to come into their head is, okay, how do I get this implemented? And so be ready to say, you know, I'll take the lead on that. Even if you don't know exactly how you might get it done, or maybe you don't have the skill sets that you that you think are needed to get it done, uh, it's fine. You can, you can ask around, you can seek help, you can find the people who know uh, what it is that, that you need them to know in order to, to put the tool or procedure or process or a flow diagram or whatever it is that you're working on in place. And and your boss will really appreciate that. When you do something that improves the performance of their team, that makes them look good. And when you make them look good, they, they will they will appreciate that. And, and I would uh, say that almost nothing will get you promoted faster than doing things that will um, enhance your boss's reputation um, just by default, by, by doing your job or by taking on special projects. So speak up, you know, be ready, be ready to say something if you see a way that something can be improved. And uh, one thing that you need to be prepared for is that your boss may uh, may not like your idea. They may not agree that what you're saying um, is something that should be implemented. Um, and that's OK. That, that happens. You know, for every uh, idea that I had that was accepted, I probably had 10 that weren't that I, I'm a very outside the box thinker. I like to look at ways to for things to be done more efficiently um, even if it requires a little extra work up front to get something put in place uh, be that a tool or a procedure um, i'm always thinking about those things so i've i've had a lot of ideas that were shot down or that my boss maybe didn't see the value in it that i did and that's okay um, but i i continue to speak up and so i i think that's something that uh, we all need to do we need to be ready to speak up when we see something that can be done better and be ready to volunteer. Volunteer our time and our talents to to implementing it. Um, why? I mean, why would we want to bring up an idea and then let someone else have all the uh, all the credit for putting it in place? Um, I think that that it's only natural that we should be the ones to speak up and volunteer. And you'll learn a ton by doing that. I, I've taken on a number of challenging projects just because I've spoke up and and wanted to see something done better. And I've had to learn skills in order to to implement. Uh, new new ideas, uh, new new programs, new tools, or, or whatever in, into my company, and so that's been va- very valuable for me in my progression and my skill set as well. So um, there's a lot of value there. Um, in in that same vein, you need to continue learning. You know, don't don't just go to your job with the skill set that you have, doing the same things day in and day out, and not trying to advance. So if you think about why your company is paying you what they're paying you, they're paying you based on a skill set that you have. Now, most people feel that they're underpaid or that they're not paid uh, an amount of money that compensates them adequately for the skills that they provide. Um, but that's that's part of uh, part of work. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, the negotiation process when you go into it uh, to be hired at a company, you know, they're their their position is that they want to get you uh, they want to pay you less than you're worth to them and your position is you want them to pay you uh, more than you're worth to them and that's just how it is that's the back and forth that takes place but once you accept that position for that for the amount of money um you know you you've you've made that agreement you're certainly free to leave if you feel that things don't shake out the way you thought they were going to but um you've made your bet at that point um but the way that you continue to 
get more money out of that company is to continue to learn, to grow, uh, to, to do things that make you more valuable to them. And, you know, one way to do that is, like I said a few minutes ago, to, to make uh, tools, to implement processes, to speak up about ideas that you have that will save the company money. And, and when you do that, you can go into your yearly reviews or your uh, uh, mid-year reviews or whatever you have with your company and share that with your boss. Uh, you know, how much you've saved the company or what efficiencies you've put in place to, to make sure that you remind them about the value that you're bringing. But you can do other things as well. You can you can continue to train yourself in maybe areas that you're not as familiar with or, you, or your skill set uh, isn't quite as strong in. So you so you can be more cross functional. If if you can do uh, the job of three different people instead of the job of one, that makes you more valuable to your company. Uh, you can gain additional degrees in school. Maybe maybe get a, an MBA to prove your worth as a business professional and. Um, your desire to get into management if that's something you want to do. Um, but you need to continue learning because that's essentially how you advance your skill set, how you enhance your value to your company. And you can then use that as leverage to negotiate a higher salary. And uh, the next thing is to challenge yourself. When you go about your day at work, don't just go through the motions. You know, as you're looking for ways that you can do things more efficiently or maybe the, the team around you can do things more efficiently, challenge yourself. Uh, challenge yourself to get better. See if there are things that you're doing that are maybe wasted motions, things that you're doing that could be done better, more effectively, and just try to, to improve on the way you do your job. Uh, you know, that's another way that you provide value to your employer. When they see that you are doing things better than the team around you or than your coworkers, or those in your same group, you know that that speaks volumes to the type of person you are and to the fact that you're taking initiative. And it really isn't hard to stand out in this regard because most people do go to work and they simply go through the motions. You know that they're told to build a widget and they or build a thousand widgets, however many it is, and, and that's what they do. They sit on this line and they just almost as a zombie in a comatose state, just go through the motions of building widget after widget after widget after widget. Uh, they don't really think about the process involved or how may, how they could do something better or faster or with higher quality. Uh, so challenge yourself. Look, Think about every step in the process that you do at work. Think about how you can save time, how you can do something more efficiently, uh, you may find a way to do something more efficiently that you can then share with your boss. Uh, say, hey, here's what I've been doing, and I've been able to build a 1,000 widgets uh, 50% faster than the rest of the team, and, and I'd like to share that with you so, so we can uh, maybe implement this across the team so everybody can, can benefit from this and the company can, can, earn, can make more money. Um, that, that enhances your value. That proves your, your worth as an employee uh, beyond what they're currently paying you. So you can negotiate a higher salary. So whatever it might be, uh, just challenge yourself. Don't don't be mind numbed as you go through your day. Uh, just going through the motions, doing the things that are the bare minimum of what you've been asked to do. You know, really challenge yourself to think about what you're doing, why you're doing it. Uh, think outside the box to find out if there are, is something you can be doing better or more efficiently. Um, and next, next item is to prove your worth. Uh, and I talked a lot about that already, but what I didn't really talk about too much is, is the proving aspect. So I've talked about how to enhance your worth, to do things, to make you have more value to your boss, to your company, but you need to be able to prove that. And so I can't speak to what that might be for your specific job, but when you're challenging yourself and you're, uh, speaking up and volunteering for initiatives and things to make the company or your team or your specific work uh, more efficient, uh, more time effective and cost effective. You need to be logging that track it somehow um, and put metrics to it. So you can actually show your boss, uh, you can prove to them what you're worth to the company, that it's not just the, the job that you're doing, that they already have a factor built in that you're bringing some profit to them. Um, but that you can show that you're bringing additional worth to them, that, that you are a higher value than what they hired you in at. So, again, this, this can take on an almost infinite number of forms. Um, for me, on my projects, I, I would keep a spreadsheet 
And for every one of my projects, we have a certain profit that profit margin that we're expected to hit that we sell the project at. Um, so as an example, if we sell a project at a 20% gross profit margin, um, that's what I'm expected to perform on that project and my team and have my team perform on that project. Um, but what I found was that I was consistently m- making money uh, above and beyond that on my projects, whatever the, the as sold profit margins were. Um, I was, I was beating those. And so when I would go into my reviews every year, I would have a spreadsheet that I tracked every single project that I ran for that year. And I was able to show my boss that over the course of that year, by having me managing these projects, I brought in an extra $200,000, $500,000, whatever that might be, uh, to the company that I, I added to their profit margins by my skills, by the initiatives that I put in place, by the way that I ran my projects, Um, by the way that I motivated my teams. So you need to be able to prove that worth. Um, Just qualifying it is good, um, and that can can help, but when you can actually put numbers to it and quantify it, um, it, that speaks very loudly to your boss's ears and eyes. They, they, They see those numbers, and it makes it really hard for them to deny you um, a raise or a promotion because they can see very tangibly the additional value that you're bringing to the company um, by having you on their team. And then finally, um, you need to be willing to move on. So you may do all of these things. You may be not complaining, keeping good on all of your promises, speaking up on opportunities for improvement, uh, and and even volunteering to implement those uh, opportunities. You might be continuing to learn and enhance your skill set and, and degrees, challenging yourself through your day-to-day work um, so, so you're not just going through the motions and, and you might even prove your worth to your boss and you, it doesn't get you it doesn't get you anywhere you continue with your uh, without getting promoted and you continue getting your standard two to three percent raises and sometimes business conditions are what they are and that necessitates that sometimes you get a jerk of a boss and they don't like you for whatever reason uh, maybe they see they see you as a threat to them um, and so they don't reward you for that. That that does happen. And so you need to be willing to move on. Um, I, I can't give you any hard and fast rules on this, but it, I would say that if you are consistently doing the things that I've talked about up to this point uh, for two to three years and you are not promoted or, or rewarded um, financially for that, you should move on. You need to find another company. Um, take those same things that you've been doing um, that prove your worth, that increase your value to your employer and bring those with you to your interviews for your next company. You know, take those with you, show them the things that you've done, how you've enhanced uh, your value for them. And, uh, and, and whatever company you're interviewing with uh, that you're not going to, to uh, miss many job opportunities. If you can prove those things uh, during an interview and, and show the type of value uh, that you bring to a company, um, if your current employer doesn't recognize that or or value that the way they should, uh, there are plenty other employers out there who will. So that's that's uh, really it for the podcast today. Um, just how how to advance your career in corporate America. Uh, it's tough out there, you know. It, there, there's you have to find ways to differentiate yourself, and and that's the bottom line. Um, you're you're basically in a competition with everybody else around you, all of your peers, all of your coworkers. Um, and so don't, don't forget that. I mean, it's, it's cool to be friendly with everybody. And and I think you should, you know, you should be friendly with everybody. You should be cordial. Uh, you're all working toward a common goal at the end of the day in terms of what you're doing at at work. Uh, but you're not all working toward a common goal in turn, in terms of, uh, your own financial and career interests. And so remember that, you know, you're in competition with them. And, and so you need to go above and beyond whatever, whatever those around you are doing, you need to take it a, a few notches. Uh, up you need you need to be working on a different plane than they are and make sure your boss knows it um, that that's the way that you advance in anything doesn't matter what you're doing you, we should be using the successes and and the the way other men and the people around us perform and do their duties and go about their business and, and using that as a as a plumb line for us um, but we shouldn't just want to meet the the same standards that they are that they are we should want to exceed them uh, we should want to be better than those around us. And we won't always achieve that, but that's how we continue to improve. That's how we make more money. That's how we add additional skills to our repertoire. And that's how we become masculine men of higher value. 
So I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Uh, thanks again for listening. Uh, again, please go to iTunes, leave me a five-star review, let me know what you think about this podcast, help me get this message out to, to as many men as possible. Uh, you can subscribe to the Masculine by Design YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes as well to the podcast. Uh, you can also find this podcast on SoundCloud. And again, uh, please, uh, if you haven't done so already, I highly, highly recommend that you go to MasculineByDesign.com and grab your copy of my book, Masculine by Design, uh, so you can learn uh, how, to, how to begin the process of unleashing your masculinity and achieving um, all that you want in life by doing so, uh, or at least continuing to progress in that direction. Uh, we may not ever uh, achieve our potential. In fact, I don't think any man ever truly does. Um, but it should be our goal every day that we have on this earth to progress further and further and closer and closer, I should say, to that uh, potential that we've been given. So thanks again for listening. Until next time, this is Craig James from MasculineByDesign.com. I'm out.